All right, weather for Weather Geeks time. We're back after, what, 10 days off? You know, my recording software didn't think I was back this evening. Uh, I have been having a whale of a time trying to get my recording software to work this evening, so this video is getting on a little bit late. But, yeah, we're back after uh, my time off last week. I was down in uh, Ocean Isle Beach and uh, North Myrtle Beach for several days last week, and uh, that's a zone that uh, we're going to be paying a lot of attention to over the next several days as a result of powerful Florence heading their way. Back here at home, of course, our big story recently has been the rains. This was a well-forecasted event. The rainfall total is pretty much exactly what we expected over the course of the weekend. Now, just from midnight to midnight on Sunday, during the calendar day Sunday, at the Youngstown Warren Airport, we registered three and a half inches worth of rain. How does this stack up against other very rainy individual days in Youngstown weather history? Uh, going back to 1930, it does not crack the top ten. Uh, more recently, back in October of 2016, we had a 4-inch rainfall that day. And, of course, this July 21st of 03 was part of a very rainy week that caused some extreme uh, flooding, especially river flooding, across the area. Total precipitation from Saturday through this morning, a range of about 4 to 6 inches was pretty common across our region. Now, we didn't see tremendous flooding problems because, you know, unlike what happened in Boardman a month ago, this did not come all at once. This was four to six inches spread out over about, oh, almost 48 hours, really. And so this is what I talked about on a lot of my weekend videos when I got back from my trip. Don't expect a repeat, uh, and that's a good thing. Don't expect a repeat of uh, what happened a month ago in Boardman. This is not a flash flood situation. This is a gradual heavy rainfall event that uh, did lead to some, some minor flooding issues in areas of poor drainage, and we had some... Uh, uh, some high rivers as well, but uh, this, uh, as I told you about, was not a repeat of the flash flooding event last month in Boardman and Poland. We added about a half an inch early this morning at the Youngstown Warren Airport, uh, adding up uh, to about four and a half inches or so at the airport for that three-day event. Well, how much is four inches worth of rain? Well, if you have an, a parcel of land that's an acre, four inches of rain ends up being about 101,616 gallons worth of rain. So on average, that's about how many gallons fell on any individual acre of land over the last few days. All right, here's a look at some of our river gauges. Uh, the uh, Ohio River at Wellsville, we've already crested here, it looks like, and uh, the river will go down fairly quickly over the next 12 hours or so. We've yet to crest at East Liverpool. Uh, we'll probably see that crest tomorrow morning at about 15.2 feet. Uh, that is in the uh, minor flood stage. Not expecting a serious flood situation down there, but uh, uh, certainly a high river level down in East Liverpool. Up at Eagle Creek uh, in southwestern Trumbull County, uh, probably cresting right around now, and uh, the creek will continue to go down as we go into the day on Tuesday. Uh, storm tracker radar this morning, uh, or this evening, I should say, quiet, uh, but it's a little deceptive. This is one of those kind of murky evenings uh, where a little drizzle is trying to fall and it's not being detected by the radar. We see this sometimes in drizzle situations, also some flurry situations in the wintertime. Uh, we're in between the Cleveland and Pittsburgh radar. By the time the radar beam gets, a, gets to our region, well, it's, it's climbing because the Earth is round. It's not flat. And therefore, the beam is about, on average, three, four, five thousand 5,000 feet above our heads. And so anything that's falling under that level sometimes is not picked up by the radar, and that's why our radar is a little deceptive out there this evening. All right, I want to spend some time talking about Florence. Uh, this is not a current uh, loop, of course, because the sun has gone down, so we don't get a visible satellite uh, at this time of the day. But I, this was a stunning visible satellite this afternoon, so I did want to show you what the, what the satellite looked like earlier on. Now, as of the 5 p.m. advisory, this was a solid Cat 4. Winds 140, gusts to 165. Pressure continues to fall down to 939. Just a textbook hurricane with a buzzsaw look to it. And then the big question is going to be, what happens to Florence? All right, if you have friends and relatives down in the Carolinas, of course, they need to pay very close attention uh, to this. Uh, this is going to be a life-threatening situation for parts of the Carolinas in a few days. Already mandatory evacuations have started on the Outer Banks. This is likely to make landfall. It's going to make landfall somewhere. It's just a matter of where. And right now, the cone extends from roughly Myrtle Beach up to about Hatteras with the most likely track probably somewhere in here, pretty close to maybe Jacksonville, North Carolina, maybe down to Wilmington, but that's not set in stone. And the exact track, of course, will have a tremendous uh, impact on the kind of weather that individual locations will see. 
Uh, I was just in Myrtle Beach last week, and if the track is like this, Myrtle gets away with some wind and rain, but nothing terrible. Jog, you know, say 20 miles, maybe 50 miles to the south, and then Myrtle Beach is in a world of hurt. Um, and that's just one example. So, you know, we haven't fine-tuned, uh, we haven't gotten down and drilled down to the exact part of the Carolinas that this will make landfall, but it's it's probably going to be somewhere between Myrtle and Hatteras. This is going through just bath water. Uh, I, I was swimming, you know, in North Myrtle and Ocean Isle last week, and the, the water was very warm, probably middle and upper 80s. These are uh, buoys showing the temperatures, and where you see this kind of dark maroon color, I guess, that's water temperatures that are pushing 90 degrees. Now, closer to the U.S., the buoy temperatures are in the, uh, in the mid-80s, um, but still, this is very, very warm water, and there's very little wind shear, so conditions are very good for this to continue to at least maintain its strength, if not perhaps uh, strengthen to a Cat 5 for a time. Now, when storms get to a strong Cat 4, Cat 5, they have a hard time maintaining that strength for a fair amount of time. We start to get into some eyewall replacement cycles where the, the storm will cycle down a little bit, but hopefully no one down there is fooled by that because, okay, it goes up to a Cat 5 and then it's down to a Cat 4, but we're talking a 10, 15 mile per hour difference here. The impacts are going to be about the same. Here's a look at the latest run of our models. Uh, there's been a northward shift in the modeling today. So even though the cone, the official cone, goes down to about Myrtle, I, I would start favoring the center to the uh, northern and eastern side of that cone based on the latest modeling here. The spaghetti plot shows uh, Wilmington on north is a little more favored than south of Wilmington as far as a landfall point. So. Odds of tropical storm force winds down in the Carolinas uh, very high from Myrtle to Wilmington, Ocean Isle Beach, Jacksonville, Cape Lookout, even up to Hatteras, and even fairly far inland. Tropical storm force winds are pretty likely. Hurricane force winds, uh, the odds, I suspect these numbers are still a little conservative. They'll be going up as we get a little closer to landfall. Uh, so again, this is kind of the zone that we're going to pay closest attention to. I suspect, in north, uh, southeastern North Carolina. So, again, if you have friends and family, ho hopefully they uh, are rushing their preparations to completion, and if they need to, evacuate. Uh, hopefully they are making plans to do so. Uh, you don't evacuate because of the wind. The evacuations are because of the water and the flooding. And, I mean, just, this is going to be biblical flooding. Uh, you know, outside of the wind part of this, the, the, the rain is going to be incredible. You know, when you see these purples, you know, this is the top end of our scale here. Someone's going to get 20 inches worth of rain out of this, probably in North Carolina, perhaps parts of Virginia, even up against the eastern flank of the Appalachians in West Virginia and the Panhandle of Maryland. Uh, I suspect uh, this is going to be fairly catastrophic flooding. I've gotten a lot of questions about uh, you know, people are a little bit uh, skittish because of all the rain that we just picked up. Uh, people don't want Florence to bring us more rain, and I doubt it's going to bring us much. Now, I can't rule out some showers uh, from the remnants of Florence Sunday and Monday, but, you know, I don't think we're going to see much in the way of impacts here. A uh, little rain, yes, but I, I don't think we're going to see big impacts around here. Here's the big picture for your Tuesday. It could be a little drizzle in the morning. Otherwise, another pretty cloudy, pretty cool day, upper 60s on Tuesday. It's going to be one of those days where it kind of looks like it wants to rain. Might spritz and sprinkle and drizzle, especially in the morning. In other words, it's going to be eh, well, a lot like today. Uh, Wednesday will be fairly similar looking, although we may see some peaks of sun and a little warmer temperatures on Wednesday. We'll get into the mid-70s. Thursday's a day where I think we're going to try to get into a little more sun. But I also had to throw in the possibility of a stray shower or a storm in the afternoon on Thursday. And the dew points are going to come up on Thursday, so it's going to start to feel muggy at the end of the week. Check out our dew point trend here. Yeah, it's going to feel pretty tropical end of the week and into the weekend. We're not done with summer. It's been cool and clammy lately, but we are not done with summer anytime real soon. Now, in the longer range, past the next week in the 8 to 14 day period, I think a cool down is coming. Um, so this warm, humid air that uh, is coming at the end of this week is not going to last forever. We're into mid-September now, and it gets harder and harder for the air mass to stay warm and steamy and humid at this time of the year. So I, th I think we will see a little bit of a pattern change as we go into that uh, third week of September. That's it for tonight's Weather for Weather Geeks. Thanks for joining me. I'll have more updates on our local weather, on Florence, and everything you need to know. Uh, coming up tonight on 21 News at 11. Hope to see you then.